So right now, there are people in the audience, there are people watching online, there are going to be people going to be watching this on replay, and they're already furious. They're saying, what is the world of these people talking about? I have a chemical imbalance, I'm manic depressed, how dare you even suggest that I have anything to do with this, and it's the meds are saving me, so these people are crazy, I am, I am, I am manic depressed, or I have a chemical imbalance, I was told that, and the only answer is medication, and w what are you guys saying? So, okay, so for those people that have been told they have a chemical imbalance, told they're manic depressed, they have manic depression, um, and told they need to be on pharmaceutical drugs, how, how do you respond when people? Why don't you start with that, because okay. the chemical imbalance thing is. And I'm, I'm gonna talk about depression rather than manic depression. And the only reason I'm going to do that is I know the data on depression inside and out. I've studied the clinical trials. I haven't looked at that closely at the literature on, on, on the um, uh, uh, bipolar disorder, as it's called, yeah, manic I'll talk depression. About that a little bit. And, um, so I'm, but I, I, one of the things I've learned is I have to be very careful. I come under a lot of attack. So I won't say anything unless I know I can back it. Uh, it up. And yes, people do, and this is, this is the tricky part, because people go in, they're, they're told they have a chemical imbalance. Now there's not a reputable scientist that I know of today that studies brain chemistry and depression who still believes in the chemical imbalance theory. It has been refuted. It's as close to any theory and science to have been disproven. One of the ways we know that, take a person who's not depressed, and you, it's possible to very quickly delete the levels of serotonin in their brain. The basic idea, the most popular uh, chemical imbalance theory, is that depression is caused by not having enough of this neurotransmitter, serotonin, in the, in the brain, in the synapses in, in the brain. Now, it's very easy to give people a, a, a beverage that has all of the precursors for all of the uh, neurotrans except serotonin, and their serotonin levels drop. And if, if depression were caused by not having enough serotonin, that ought to make them depressed. But it doesn't. So we know we know that depression is not caused by not having enough serotonin. So I've worked with quite a few clients with manic depression, schizophrenia even. And um, when they follow the kind of diet that heals their gut, because I'm sure most of you know by now that 80% of the immune system is in the gut and that the gut creates toxicity in the brain. Uh, when it's out of balance. And of course there's so much in our environment that creates an out of balance gut. And so when my clients are willing to eat really well and do the work they need to do to heal their gut, plus to do the inner work they need to do to learn to love themselves rather than reject and abandon themselves, they heal from bipolar disorder and they're able to get off their lithium, their, their medication. I've seen it over and over again. And with schizophrenia as well, we're not talking about that, but I've had clients who, the same thing, were diagnosed for 20 years and on medication, changed their diet, learned inner bonding, and they're no longer schizophrenic. So, you know, so many of these disorders are being caused by things other than this mythical brain imbalance. Um. I appreciate what both of you are saying, but to the best of my knowledge, I believe that right now, if maybe we're talking about adults, but if someone's under 18 and they're depressed, it seems like the standard policy is to bring them to someone who tells them that they need to go on an antidepressant. So what about with people under 18? Are you, do those people need to go on an antidepressant, or are you still saying for them there should be a different course of action? You know, um, so many of them are depressed because of their diets. 
you know, they're, they're drinking sodas, they're eating candy, they're eating donuts, they're, their guts are decimated. Um, they have leaky gut syndrome. And that's creating the toxicity in their brains that are, that's creating the depression. And over and over again you see that when parents change their diets and the children change their diets, their depression goes away, along with learning how to take loving care of themselves. And I have to tell you, looking at the data, that the data, the clinical trial data, on the use of antidepressants for children is even worse than the data for adults. They don't show this small difference between the real drug and the placebo. They don't show any difference at all, but there are risks. And one of the risks for young people, for children, for adolescents and young adults of being on an antidepressant is that it increases the risk of suicidal behavior. The FDA recognizes that. And a number of years ago, they issued a black box warning, warning people about that, that's on the label for SSRIs for the most popular antidepressants. So I think the worst thing you can do, the worst thing you can do, is to get a child started on these medications.